Welcome back to Inspiring Builds. I'm Dan, and today we have a new drill press in the shop. This is a WEN Model 4214T. I will cover high level assembly and setup to get it dialed in, as well as a review and honest feedback. This is not a sponsored video, and the cost of this machine was all out of pocket. This is one of my favorite budget friendly purchases to date. Usually you sacrifice quality and key features with lower price points, and it's not the case with this drill press. The drill press was well packaged with sufficient packaging material. I won't bore you with all of the unboxing, but here is an overview of the specs. For assembly, you will need a 5 8 inch or 16 millimeter socket or wrench, a block of wood if using a metal hammer like I am, cleaner to remove oil and debris, and the wrench as well as allen keys are included in the packaging. Lay out all of the parts and give the unit a good wipe down to remove the oil and debris from shipping first. This drill press is $250, and I'll include a link in the description below. Similar drill presses such as one from Jet can easily cost upwards of $700 that is more than double the cost. Less than half of the price for similar features is a huge win. If you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any of these tutorials. Starting with the base, attach the column to the base with four bolts. Align the column support holes to the base holes. I get them finger tight and use a 16 millimeter socket wrench to tighten them down. A 5 8 inch wrench will also do the trick. Install the crank handle to raise and lower the table. Align the Allen screws with the flat surface and tighten it down. There are two table lock handles. Wynn does a good job marking which direction to insert the handles. One is on the front of the table support bracket. Thread in the handle but do not fully tighten it so the table can be installed. This lock handle will be on the same side as the crank handle. The other is in the rear of the table support bracket and it gets threaded in opposite of the crank handle. Carefully insert the drill press head onto the column and ensure it's fully seated on the column. The head assembly gets tightened down with the one set screw. Before fully tightening down, I measured the base and marked the middle using a piece of scrap wood. This allowed me to align the head assembly using the laser and lock it in place with the provided Allen wrench. Insert the wing knobs for the drill press table sliding stabilizing bar. Slide on the table and tighten down the locking bolt. Install the handles for the feed. Simply screw them in hand tight and use the wrench included to tighten the rest of the way. Install the last handle for the spindle speed adjuster to adjust your RPMs. Let me know in the comments below if you've had a drill press that you had to adjust the belt and pulleys to be able to adjust the speed of your drill press. Those days are gone with this machine. Clean out the spindle and inspect for no debris. I use a shop towel with some alcohol along with compressed air. Make sure the jaws of the chuck are completely recessed into the chuck by manually turning the chuck barrel clockwise. Insert the chuck arbor into the opening at the top of the chuck and insert the arbor into the spindle. The chuck is a friction press fit. To seat the chuck, use a wood block and tap the chuck into position. To remove the chuck, turn the feed handles to lower the chuck to the lowest position and I use the lower depth knob to make it easy. Insert the provided drift key into the opening and gently tap on the key with the rubber mallet but ensure to raise the table to avoid the chuck falling. The chuck that comes with the drill press is a keyed chuck that includes a storage location on the side. To wrap up assembly and setup, bend a piece of stiff wire such as a coat hanger into a Z shape. You can use this to ensure the table is set square to the bit in all directions by checking that the wire drags consistently across the table surface doing a full rotation around the table. On the front of the drill press is a power switch to flip it on and off and has a key that will not allow the machine to be powered on when removed. I have a safety first mindset and thought this was a nice safety feature. This model is 4214T. I would recommend at least this size for DIY projects. 
It has a variable speed range of 580 to 3200 RPMs, which is my favorite part. Adjust the speed once the drill press is powered on by simply raising the lever to increase the speed or lower it to decrease the speed, which really comes in handy when working with different materials such as going from wood to metal. This was a huge selling feature for me as the days of adjusting belts and pulleys are long gone. It makes me think if this drill press has this feature at a $250 price point, why can't it become the standard? It has a nice easy to read digital readout as well. It has a chart that lists recommended speeds by material. It has a nice light that is easy to swap out if ever needed, along with a laser that we will put to the test shortly. It has a drilling depth gauge that can easily be adjusted. Simply rotate the lower depth knob until the bottom is aligned with the desired depth mark of 1 inch for this example, and rotate the top depth knob until it meets the lower knob. I use this feature quite a bit to make repeatable holes at the same depth on my projects. The depth gauge is also useful for removing the arbor and chuck to make it easily accessible once locked all the way down. This is a 12 inch swing tabletop drill press allowing you to drill the center of a 12 inch workpiece. The table can be extended to accommodate longer workpieces. The table can be rotated to any position needed. It can be rotated around the column raised or lowered, as well as tilted 45 degrees in either direction by loosening the screw underneath. I use this digital angle finder to ensure it's zero to align with the gauge. I will provide a link below to this digital angle finder to make perfect adjustments that I use quite a bit on the drill press and table saw. The spindle has a travel depth of 3 and 1 8 inch, allowing plenty of room for all of my DIY projects. The machine is very solid with cast iron weighing about 85 pounds. It runs on 120 volts and 5 amps and has plenty of power. We're going to drill our first hole and test the alignment lining up the laser with the mark. It has a nice laser feature that was very accurate straight out of the box. There aren't many cons with this machine. The quality and features are there. If I were to upgrade two things it would be a larger table as well as adding dust collection in the future. Many of you typically ask if I would purchase this again, and the answer is 100%. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, as the next video will be building the mobile drill press stand on this three-part series.